Currently, there are more than 5 million cubic miles of ice on Earth, which is four times the amount of liquid water on Earth. According to scientists, it will take more than 5,000 years for all of it to melt. But, have you ever thought of what would happen if the ice suddenly melted due to a global catastrophe or climate change? Welcome to Top Luxury. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comments below what you think about what would happen if all the ice melted. The issues of global warming and climate change are issues that will be around for a long time as scientists try to find ways to combat the effects. If all the ice on Earth suddenly melted, there would be a rise in sea levels by 66 meters. This would be disastrous to coastal cities around the world, which we well know are the hubs of commerce and development worldwide. Take New York City, for example, well known for its towers and skyscrapers. It is the most populous city in the United States and is home to over 7,000 completed high-rise buildings of at least 35 meters. But with the skyscrapers and whatnot, New York City has an elevation of 10 meters above sea level. This means that most of the city will be flooded as its highest natural point is 122 meters. This would have far-reaching consequences as the subways will be shut down, basements will be flooded, and electricity will be out. This is just the tip of what will happen. With all these in mind, the city has made plans to prevent an occurrence like this. In 2019, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio announced that he wanted to make the island of Manhattan bigger. He would do this by extending it 152 meters into the East River to better protect the financial district and nearby areas from sea level rise. Previously, de Blasio had also invested $43 billion in a hurricane restoration fund. Part of the money was dedicated to building new seawalls, raising existing ones to check sea level rise. Plans were also underway to build the New York Harbor Storm Surge Barrier, a barrier and floodgate system designed to protect the city from storm surges. Unfortunately, the project was indefinitely postponed due to a lack of funding. Regardless, with the extension of the Manhattan coastline and the seawalls, we can see that New York City is working tirelessly to battle the imminent rise in sea levels. Another case in point would be Osaka, Japan. The former capital of Japan has been an economic and commercial center for centuries. Osaka is Japan's second most populous city, after Tokyo. With an elevation of 37 meters above sea level, Osaka has had its fair share of floods and storm surges. In 2018, the Kansai International Airport, which sits on a man-made island on Osaka Bay, was flooded after a typhoon. Severe damage was done as the airport had to be shut down, leaving about 3,000 travelers stranded. This caused a lot of concern for the coastline and the city. However, Osaka has implemented several flood prevention methods like seawalls, dikes, floodgates, barriers, and pumps. These help to divert water away from the subway and other vulnerable areas. With the rising sea levels, some islands are at risk of total submersion. Take Kiribati, for instance. The average elevation of this Pacific archipelago is less than 2 meters above the sea. Current estimations forecast that large parts of the country could be underwater by 2050. The island nation remains one of the world's most vulnerable countries, subject to the devastation wrought by climate change's extreme weather patterns. But the government remains determined to counter the forecast, devising a contingency plan to ensure the protection of its 110,000 residents. About half of these residents live in the capital, South Tarawa, a narrow strip of land between the Pacific and an enormous lagoon that depends on fresh water. Due to the rise in sea levels, Kiribatians have begun to emigrate. Others, however, have chosen to stay back and look for solutions. In 2020, Kiribati President Taneti Mamau disclosed the country's plans to raise its islands above sea level. This was to secure the nation's future in light of the impending rise in sea levels. Some towns have shifted a few meters inland. Mangroves have also been planted to protect the soil from erosion and mitigate storm surges. They have also considered building floating platforms, just like petroleum companies or even concrete reinforced seawalls. Unfortunately, both options have been ruled out due to cost. 
A platform of that magnitude would cost around $2 billion, which is 10 times Kiribati's GDP. However, the Kiribati government has bought land in Fiji to grow crops. It could also serve as a safe haven for its citizens if the worst happens and they need to be evacuated. The World Bank has also argued that Australia and New Zealand should allow open migration of people displaced by climate change from Kiribati and other Pacific islands threatened by the sea. Until now, only the government of New Zealand has responded to the needs of Kiribatians. They allow 75 people to migrate to New Zealand per year. Mumbai, the financial capital of India, is also at risk of being submerged by 2050. With an average elevation of 14 meters above sea level, the city of Mumbai has the highest concentration of high-rise buildings in India. More than 7,000 high-rise buildings have been constructed in the Mumbai metropolitan region. Most skyscrapers in Mumbai are residential, and it is the city with the seventh highest number of skyscrapers in the world. It is interesting to note at this point that Mumbai is built on a chain of seven islands. It is estimated that there will be a 5 to 10% increase in the population living below the projected high tide line by the end of the century. Just as much of the southern parts of Mumbai may sink at least once a year below the projected high tide line. In a bid to manage the imminent rise in sea levels, the central government has given the go-ahead to the Marahashtra Maritime Board's project to create artificial reefs, dunes, and other defenses against the rising sea level across four coastal districts in the state. The plan is to use geobags or some other alternative material to build artificial reefs 100 to 300 meters offshore to counter the balance of strong tides. Dunes will then be set up towards the landward end of 20 beaches, with plantations acting as the first line of defense. Meanwhile, Miami, USA sits at 2 meters above sea level. It is the third most populous city on the east coast of the United States. The city compensates for its low elevation level with its over 300 skyscrapers. In recent years, the city has experienced an increased frequency in flooding caused by high water tides, elevated groundwater levels, and oversaturated soil. Storm surge has been a challenge as it raises the water surrounding Miami Beach above average levels. This causes damage to upland properties and infrastructure. Given all this, the city is working tirelessly to reverse these effects. Raising roads above sea level can help drain water and reduce tidal flooding. The city has installed pump stations and other innovative drainage improvements to remove this excess water. Miami is looking to incorporate natural solutions and restore its habitat. In 2014, it completed a dune restoration enhancement project along the eastern portion of the city. The healthier and more robust dune system provides habitats for native species. It offers critical storm surge and erosion control protection. They are also looking at creating living shorelines, increasing the city's tree canopy, and restoring green space where appropriate. What do you think about the rise in sea level in your location? Is your region at risk of being submerged in the coming decades? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to Top Luxury. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.